A very good evening and a warm welcome to all our esteemed guests and to their learners. I am Dr. Ria Chakral from Radar Opus by Bijan Rx, and we are here to discuss a very essential topic: study of homeopathic materia medica with Dr. Satyajit Kuchar. He is live with us right now, as you can see. But before I hand over to him, let me introduce him to you for a quick while. Just give me a second. So, yeah. So. Dr. Satyajit, he is an MD in homeopathy and he practices in Maharashtra. He is also a nutrition, diet planning and weight loss consultant. Recently, his book, Widening Horizons in Study of Homeopathy and Eye-Opening and Thought-Provoking Insights has been published, as you can see in the slide. His articles and other writings have been published in National Journal of Homeopathy and the homeopathic heritage. Besides practicing, he loves teaching students and doctors through social media. We and Homeopathy's Homeo Study Circle is founded by him for the same purpose. He has been teaching to students and doctors from different parts of India and abroad. He has also been invited for guest lectures in homeopathy colleges and homeopathy forums. His webinars have also been quite appreciated. Thank you, sir, for being here with us. And before I hand over to you, let me quickly explain to our learners how this interface works. So on the right hand side panel of your screens, you have a short chat box. You may type your questions or whatever message you have for Dr. Satyajit right there and press the button next to it to send it to us. I request you all to send your questions only after Sir's lecture is over as that might disturb him and we wouldn't want that. Without wasting any more time, let's start learning. Over to you, Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ria, for such a warm introduction. And uh, shall we begin with the topic proper? Uh, so can you just sir. play the slide, uh, the study of homeopathic materia medica? Yes, sir. right away. Uh, so the topic for today is the study of homeopathic materia medica. Uh, next, please. Uh, so as you can see, uh, we'll be studying significance of homeopathic materia medica. Uh, relationship of materia medica to organon and repertory difficulties in the study of homeopathic materia medica i won't be talking on this topic we'll keep this uh, section as an interactive and in you can ask me your difficulties related uh, towards the end of the towards the end of the session and instructions from masters about the study of homeopathic materia medica and we'll study one drug from various materia medicas so i'm not uh, right now i'm not uh, disclosing the name i'll disclose that name in the second half of the session and towards the end we'll take a q and a session uh, next please so a very good afternoon to everyone so we'll begin with a very positive quote it does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop so this is very relevant uh, in our progress and study of homeopathy na? so it are uh, uh, like progress and like uh, footsteps should not stop so no matter how slowly we go, so not stopping is most important. So I thank all the doctors and students for attending this webinar. And thank you, Dr. Ria. Thank, thank you, Mr. Jispalji. And thank you, Dr. Rajeshji. So we'll begin with two short stories. Uh, we'll begin with a story of a donkey. Uh, as you know, donkeys uh, are beasts of burden. Uh, there was a donkey who was laden with uh, some like uh, goods and he was supposed to carry those goods but for some reason or the other he was not moving from his place he was not uh, like making the slightest move so the owner thought i should decrease the weight so he tried to decrease the weight he was not moving uh, like he removed uh, the entire baggage uh, from his back uh, still he was not moving. Uh, so he thought uh, the donkey might be hungry or thirsty. So he fed him with some food and water. Still the donkey was not moving. So he thought that uh, now the donkey needs some beating. So he started beating the donkey. Still the donkey did not move. Uh, 
then some like uh, naughty and funny guy he gave a suggestion that you do one thing you bring a very uh, beautiful female donkey and uh, like uh, make her walk in front of the donkey maybe he'll maybe he'll start walking maybe he'll follow her that also but still donkey did not walk ultimately one fellow came ultimately one individual came uh, he whispered something in the uh, in the ear of the donkey what he said <laughs> after that the donkey started walking so can you guess what did he uh, say so can you guess what what the person might have said so can we have some very quick comments very quickly very quickly because i need to move ahead with the next point so any ideas what did the person might have said in the donkey's ears so the person so the person uh okay no inputs uh no inputs here dr riya no sir Hello? i guess everybody is confused <laughs> everybody is confused okay 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 <laughs> yeah okay the person who whispered in the uh, in the ear of the donkey was a homeopathy physician and he said chalta hai chup chap ke homeopathic materia medica samjhao ki homeopathic materia medica bolna shuru karu bas to such is the conception of homeopathic materia medica so just keep this short story in mind and we'll move towards one more short story uh you might have heard the story of six blind men who were like told to uh like just uh, feel the elephant just see uh, obviously just take a feel of the elephant and describe how the elephant is so the person who held his tail he described that the elephant is like a snake the person who held his leg he described that uh, elephant is like a pole the person who held his tusk Uh, described that the elephant is like a spear the person who held his held his ear he described that uh, elephant is like that uh, there is an there is uh, some tool which you like anaj mein se kankar alag karne ke liye wo use karte hai na it shape is like that it's called soup in marathi i don't what it what it's called in hindi the person who held the uh, and the year he said that the elephant is like that so the same thing happens with any drug picture so whatever we know of a remedy is scattered in different materia medicas hence it is advisable to study a drug from different materia medicas so you just keep the story in mind and in the next slides i'll keep uh, and i'll uh, tell you again what is relevant so uh, as you can see the homeopathic materia medica is intriguing it it arouses your interest it arouses your interest it can be intricate uh, sometimes it uh, seems that it is very difficult to compre- uh, uh, comprehend it's very difficult to uh, understand uh, it's very difficult to understand why a certain symptom is there in a certain drug or why a certain drug uh, behaves in a certain way though we have uh, very rational explanation these days in various materia medicas it, it uh, sometimes it can seem inexplicable impenetrable dimag ke andar jata hi nahi hai dimag ke andar ghusta hi nahi hai aisa drug hai to aisa hi kyu hai so there is a reason for everything unfathomable sometimes it seems that it, it we cannot comprehend materia medica but despite of every i i u u ultimately in the end the study of materia medica is indispensable you cannot deny the importance of homeopathic materia medica uh this is uh, this thing is very well known to the homeopaths the importance of homeopathic materia medica but certain trends have aroused uh, which have like led to the mechanical use of repertory so the mechanical use of repertory will like just as we say garbage in and garbage out so mechanical use of the repertory will land up only in failure or in confusion if not failures so ultimately materia medica is indispensable so we'll just move towards what our stalwarts have to say so as you can see in the slide the materia medica can be learned by careful study and by using it 
it can be understood but not memorized all who would memorize the materia medica must ignominiously fail to be constantly at hand it must be constantly and correctly used the continuous study of homeopathic materia uh, materia medica by the aid of a full repertory by comparison is the only means of continuing in a good working knowledge to learn the materia medica one must master hanemans organon after which the symptomatology and the organon go hand in hand the organon the symptomatology and the full repertory must be attained and maintained so what happened once dr nash uh, went to see dr huges dr huges has written very authoritative books in homeopathy and it uh, was his reputation that he has learned the materia medica by heart but when dr nash uh, interacted with him and he came to know more details about him he came to know that Na- uh, dr huges was not a successful practitioner and he had learned the materia medica by heart but he couldn't understand it so this is uh, this can happen with even uh, such stalwarts so it can happen to us also so learning materia medica by heart is such a fallacy it's so dr herring says that to acquire a foreign language what good would it do to learn the dictionary from beginning to end so that's like learning a dictionary from beginning to end cannot teach you grammar it cannot teach you nuances of that language it cannot teach you the communication skills just the same way learning materia medica by heart cannot teach you case management cannot teach you prognosis of the case cannot teach you nuances of homeopathy uh, practice particularly in the clinic so uh, next please so here again dr herring adds learning the materia medica by heart would be a highly absurd plan and not only impossible on account of the extent of the undertaking but even if possible still utterly useless in order to acquire a foreign language what good it do to learn the dictionary from beginning to end uh, next please this is the most important this is the uh, this is a very important topic or uh, rather this is a very important point what generally happens now these days when we uh, approach our teachers when we approach our gurus or when we read any article when we read any book or when we attend any webinar any lecture uh, our expectation is that uh, we should learn uh, the drug picture a certain drug behaves in a certain way or we should learn the versions of the language this is the rubric and this is the simplified uh, and this is the uh, verbal expression of the patient if this is the verbal expression this can be the rubric we want a direct direct precise precise content which we want to apply in our clinic that is very uh, it is very justi- justifiable to ask that because ultimately we want to apply everything in the clinic and ultimately we want to give a uh, relief to the patient and ultimately it's the question of bread and butter and success and mental satisfaction every aspect needs to be fulfilled but in this approach what happens we fail to read or we fail to uh, like come across or we fail to try to understand what our stalwarts have written regarding the study of homeopathic materia medica so there are certain so dr boger dr herring and many other stalwarts have written uh, about how materia medica should be studied so we never Uh, try to read that, or we never try to understand that, and this makes a difference. So we'll, I'll just read out what Dr. Tyler said, and you will be able to uh, relate to the story of uh, the elephant and six blind men. So different persons realize or visualize the same drug in different ways, according to their experiences of it, of its different powers and uses. It is therefore wise to study drugs as described by different writers. one find one uh, point emphasized by one apo- uh, exponent one by another so i'll just give you a small example so uh, i'll give you a very small example like uh, when we think of indecisive remedies we st- we think of the carbon group we think of pulsatilla we think of graphitis uh, hardly we think about baraita car so dr borik has mentioned in his materia medica that baraita carb is indecisive but he has just mentioned indecisive 
and how baraita carb is indecisive that is very nicely explained by dr george vitolkas so we have been reading in a, a, i'm giving you another example we have been reading since our student days in dubai and then in kent and then in other materia medicas that arsenic is is a gold headed cane person then how is the beautiful explanation is to be found by kathleen coulter uh and just as i said na the different persons visualize uh, just as dr tyler said different persons realize or visualize the same drug in different ways according to their experience of its different powers and uses it is therefore wise to study drugs as described by different writers so what she says na i found this very well depicted in the drug picture of plumbum so if you read plumbum uh, from dr george vitolkas if you read plumbum from dr shankaran sir and if you read the single uh, remedy rubrics of plumbum you will not come to know that this uh, uh, we are reading this about plumbum you will uh, you will feel that we are reading about different drugs so just like the uh, parts of the elephant they have described the discrete aspects of that drug only if you combine that then only you get a collective picture of the elephant symbolically and metaphorically you get the collective picture of the entire remedy so in the next half of the session we'll see uh, we'll study a remedy from different uh, uh, authors and writers so you keep all these points in mind so instead of like uh, making certain materia medica as your favorite so it is always advisable to study a drug from various authors next please yeah what dr shankaran sir writes in his preface is very very important dr shankaran sir says that for a long time i hesitated to write a book on remedies because i am well aware of the dangers inherent in such an undertaking in the first place there is a strong possibility that the reader especially if he is a beginner in the field might become fixed on these remedy pictures and forget that the last line is very important and forget that every remedy has a wider range and greater scope than any one individual can see or describe so so now you come to know how relevant and how true is the story of the blind man and six six uh, uh, elephant and six blind men so this is so relevant so what are masters uh, what the present masters and what the past masters are telling us so it is always wise to study a drug from various types of materia medicas and avoid making certain materia medicas your favorite you can have certain materia medicas as your favorite and you can have certain materia medicas uh, referring continuously and continuously but it is again and again time and again i'll just say that study a drug from different materia medicas so we'll go to another quote dr elise barker different doctors are obviously apt to give different pictures if they try to compress the vast potentialities of a drug in few lines next please uh i don't know how many of you know uh, the name of dr andri saini he is one of the exponents of uh, pure hanuman in homeopathy in uh, in this date in today's date he practices in north america in uh, canada he has authored a book also and his authority on pure hanuman in homeopathy so his writings are very eye opening and thought provoking so few of his writings i have quoted in this webinar so i'll just like uh, read out some usually when i teach materia medica i put all materia medicas on the table i comment on all of them what is the importance what is the weakness what is the strength how to use them the advantages and disadvantages uh, next please if you deviate you lose time in your practice you will not perceive the remedy for many many years because you are not working in an inductive way a lot of time you work with fancies you do not perceive things so this uh, what he says is very very important is very very thought provoking and very very eye opening uh dr dia can we go to the uh, one slide before yes yes this one so in today's scenario of materia medica what is happening that abstraction 
a uh, lot of imagination and fancies are put in uh, describing a drug regardless of what is seen in the proving or what is seen in the clinical experience the uh, the highest authority is the provings and the clinical experience and toxicological findings so any sort of imagination and abstraction based on the chemical properties and chemical or, or physical properties or for that matter doctrine of signature doctrine of signature dr hanuman in his organon and his materia medica pura in the chelidonium uh, uh, chapter in the ch- and in aphorisms 108 109 110 11 <laughs> he has rejected the idea of doctrine of signatures so it is for certain uh, to make a drug picture interesting or uh, to remember certain things it is okay to take help of uh, doctrine of signature but you cannot take the help of doctrine of signature to develop the entire drug picture if you develop that is not reliable that is only fancy what is reliable the ultimate court of appeal is materia medica and dr tyler says that no even no repertory can substitute actual provings so ultimately if you are putting if you are framing rubrics from this sort of imagination and putting it into putting it into repertory and using those rubrics for prescription you are bound to fail because such materia medica would not be reliable so again just quoting aphorisms 142 143 genuine materia medica true materia medica so uh, next please so so let's move on to uh, i hope is the last point clear is the abstraction and all that clear yes uh, we'll move towards this slide so uh, dr riya i'll just pause for a moment so uh, i just want your feedback am i so slow or fast or am i being in sync with your thoughts yes sir absolutely you're going fine yeah okay uh, thank you thank you so much i'll i'll move ahead yeah, like, sir. so dr nash says that a small farm well tilled is better than a large one slighted so this is the saying among hay makers so what he inferred from that is one remedy well studied is better than several not half understood one of the best methods of gaining a practical acquaintance with our materia medica is to master one remedy at one time both in itself and its relations and correspondence with other remedies how many of us has, have done done it how many have made the attempt so generally what happens especially in the, in the student days so we are supposed to take care of other subjects also we are supposed to study other subjects also and uh, it's not uh, it is not uh, maybe practically possible or it is very very overtaxing and it it, it it required and it requires a lot lot of dedication and like uh, other things to read kent uh, philip bailey vitholkas farrington tyle all these what all these materia medica in the ug or internship itself so it is it becomes really difficult well, what till our internship what we do or even in the early years of practice what we do is what a, what our scenario or what our knowledge of materia medica is we know little little or something about many remedies but we are not satisfied with our knowledge of any remedy ultimately we never can be complacent because but at least what we know today should be better than what we knew yesterday and what we are going to learn tomorrow should be more than what we know to what we know today so what the commonest mistake is we know little little of so many drugs but we don't study a uh, few drugs in detail so f- study of few drugs in very detail is better than knowing little 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 of many drugs so i hope you are getting this point so next please so dr adolf philip said in substance the man who has mastered lycopodium and its relations is well on his way to a practical knowledge of materia medica so we'll just move towards uh, next please so we'll just move towards the relationship of homeopathic materia medica organ of medicine and homeopathic repertory so as a language stands upon its literature dictionary 
as a language stands upon its literature dictionary and grammar the science and art of healing that is of homeopathy also stands on the tripod of the three legs materia medica organon and repertory so materia medica is the literature organon is the grammar because it has all the rules of conduct and it's i think the best way to describe uh, organon is it is an operational manual ऑपरेशनल मैनुअल में कैसे किसी भी पन्ने की जरूरत कभी भी पड़ सकती है तो किसी भी एफरिज्म किसी भी फुटनोट की जरूरत कभी भी पड़ सकती है तो आई थिंक ऑपरेशनल मैनुअल इज अ वेरी गुड वर्ड फॉर द ऑर्गेन ऑन एंड रेपरेटरी इज ऑब्वियसली इट्स द डिक्शनरी इट्स द इंडेक्स यस एंड द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड सेज दैट मटेरिया मेडिका इज अ ब्यूटिफुल बिल्डिंग बिल्ट ऑन द स्ट्रॉन्ग एडिफिस ऑफ ऑर्गेन ऑन एट द सेम टाइम वन मस्ट नॉट फोगेट द अदर ब्रांच दैट इज रेपरेटरी as it is rightly mentioned that homeopathy is compared with a bird with its body represented by materia medica materia medic uh, as its body represented by materia medica wings by organon and the tail which gives us the correct direction by the repertory so it is easily inferred that these three important branches of homeopathy are inseparable so what i have underlined the we need to understand that so if you read vitol kas's materia medica if you read kent's materia medica even if you read nash uh, some of the dictums which are applicable in practice are mentioned in materia medica you will feel that uh, this uh, point or this dictum should be included in the philosophy book or in the organon they have this is because you cannot separate materia medica organon repertory because every subject is bound inseparably bound and interrelated it is only for convenience that the subjects are uh, uh, taught and uh, and uh, described separately the functional operation of all subjects is one so i'll just give you a very beautiful example when i was in 11th standard uh, my physics lecturer uh, used to give me an example so just the way see, uh, we saw how uh, Materia medica, organ, and then repertory are related. He used to give us an example uh, how physics and mathematics are related. So he used to give a beautiful example. He said that physics literally means nature, and mathematics is the language in which you express natural phenomena. So just the way, materia medica is the literature, organ is the grammar, and repertory is the index, and if you see a bird if you uh, metaphor if you metaphorically compare these three subjects to a bird materia medica is the body organon are the wings because uh, what we ultimately apply in practice is based on organon and even if you use these two you need a tail you need a right direction so it's such a beautiful comparison na so you cannot separate you cannot mechanically depend on the repertory yes but, uh, one thing can be said that uh, being an artistic prescript uh, prescriber is what one can acquire over a period of time to begin with one can become a scientific prescriber but one should not become a mechanical prescriber so many a, a times what we see na in the repertory we see uh, we see that uh, this is the given set of symptoms this is the totality and we see and we try to find out a remedy which covers everything or at least or at least the eliminative symptom so this is also a mechanical way so ultimately all these the three subjects are inseparably bound together and now moving towards the importance of organ uh, next please so you can just you can see only with the help of organ on repertory and materia medica most importantly we can reach to the similar one uh, in certain cases the use of repertory is not important when uh, uh, rather it is not needed when the drug picture is very 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 clear uh, we have a question tell something how to transform patient's language into repertory language especially mental symptoms uh Yes, Doctor Bhattacharya will come towards the uh, will come towards your question towards the end of the session. Is that fine? Yes. So moving on to the importance of homeopathic materia medica. 
So final selection of the remedy depends on materia medica on the basis of individualization. The remedy must speak like the patient. And remedy is uh, repertory is not and was not more than systematic arrangement of symptoms. So after a repertorial result, which comes from mathematical calculations, are not in themselves an end, but they are near to the end. Next, please. Uh, next, please, Dr. Ria. Uh, final selection of a remedy is only possible from result of repertorization after referring PDF, that is potential difference field, is a concept given by Dr. Dhavle and other generals. Obviously, the thermals, desires, aversions, and other market generals, which uh, cannot be well represented in the repertory itself. Thus, we see that Materia Medica reveals what the repertory fails to complete. Uh, keep this sentence uh, in mind. Thus, we see that Materia Medica reveals what the repertory fails to complete. This uh, can be very well explained in the later half of the session when we'll begin the study of a remedy from different Materia Medicas. So, so I'll give you a very small example. You have a rubric sensorius. And there are so many remedies in that and, and they have different gradations. But the repertory cannot explain how a remedy is sensorious. Yes, we have certain uh, sub rubrics which explain certain things, but they but repertory cannot explain the nuances what a materia medica can give us. So this I'll give you just a very small example. Sulfur criticizes others for faults which he also has. Naxvamika for faults that differ from his. Arsenic album is sensorious to both kinds of defects. So this cannot be explained in the repertory. So this is what the Materia Medica tells us, which we cannot find it in the repertory. Uh, next, please. Yeah, some more wisdom from Dr. Andre Saini. So in the younger generation, uh, in, in the interns who have uh, like started their practice recently, I find a trend that they are more fascinated by the recent Materia Medicas, by the psychoanalytical Materia Medicas, and they are not much, uh, they do not give much more, they do not give the due importance to classics like Nash, Allen's Keynotes, or Boric, or Fartuk, or Blackwood, Pulford, Farrington, Tyler. They are more fascinated by Coulter, Bailey. Uh, no offenses, nothing personal against anything uh, or anyone. I'm just uh, like uh, trying to uh, uh, comment on the mentality. Like they feel that these Materia Medicas, the old classics are not that much rich in the mental symptoms. So they find it very dry and they neglect it. And uh, they are like, uh, and they remain uh, aloof and they remain ignorant of the treasures what these Materia Medicas have to offer. So in the modern Materia Medicas, there is a lot of abstraction also. There are a lot of fancies also. But what they, but what the old stalwarts have written, there is so much reliability in that. And in accordance to that, Dr. Andre Saini tells us something. Dr. Nash's book, Leaders in Homeopathic Therapeutics, I like Nash because he's reliable. There is nothing in Nash that I have read, especially his Materia Medica, that you can remove, that you can say uh, he is wrong for it or, it or it is not confirmed. It is like each thing that he says about his Materia Medica is something that is confirmed. It is like a brick of a building. You cannot change it. You can, you can build on it. And if you see and if you read Catherine Coulter's Materia Medica, there are some sentences, there are some sentences in Nash, Kent, Herring. Uh, or in Boric, which uh, you don't find a very elaborate explanation in these Materia Medicas in itself. But Philip Bailey, Catherine Coulter has uh, expanded and elaborated that beautifully. So, so what Andre Sayani sir says is so, so true. It's so, so true. So you can build, you, you cannot change it. You can build it. You can build on it. You cannot, re you cannot remove uh, 
you cannot remove anything so once again dr dia so am i slow am i fast no so you are going perfectly okay okay that is okay we'll towards we'll move towards the next slide one more important uh, thing from dr andre saini the basic method of homeopathy is to take a complete case do a good case analysis and find the correspondence in the materia medica if you do not find the rubric don't worry the rubric is there to lead you to materia medica if you have only found one remedy in the materia medica and it corresponds be sure you have a cure regardless of what is there in the repertory generally uh so i think at least some of you if not all at least some of you will agree to that if you agree to that just type a just type a y if you agree just type a y so do we have any inputs dr dia not yet sir not yet okay how many people are attending our session there are around 44 people sir okay around 44 people okay yes, so we have yes, a yes. response so we have a response great 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 thank you thank you so much thank you so much so we'll move ahead so thank you thank you for the responses uh, so that is just that the talk should not be one sided <laughs> so one more important thing uh, in today's date there are more than 4000 remedies so it is not practically possible to keep all those remedies in our clinic it is not practically possible to study all those remedies it is not practically possible to include all those remedies in the syllabus neither of the undergraduate syllabus nor of the postgraduate nor in the phd syllabus so there are certain drugs which need to be studied on top priority as compared to others so do you agree to this point so i won't ask you to type <laughs> this is very logical so our stalwarts have given a list of remedies so a, a list of 144 remedies can be compiled uh, dr kd kanodia has compiled this list so we'll move towards the list uh, next please dr dia so guidelines from stalwarts as to which remedy should be studied on priority uh, next please So, Dr. J. H. Clark advises us to study and understand 13 polycrests on priority, as they meet majority of cases. He places them in order of importance. So you can just read them. Uh, my voice is not clear. Someone said, uh, "Okay, Dr. Harprab." Sir, that might be some connection problem from their side. I can hear your uh, voice very clearly. Okay. Okay, that is fine. Absolutely. Please fine. continue. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. J. H. Clark. Advises to study and understand thirteen polycrests on priority as they meet majority of cases. He places them in order of importance, like sulfur, lycopodium, like calcarea, carb, arsenic, thuja, econite, nexwamica, pulsatilla, silesia, hypersulf, china, belladonna, and bryonia. Uh, uh, I want to ask you, Dr. Dia. So, can the participants uh, take a screenshot of that? Yes, sir. They can. Yeah, yeah. If you want, you can take a screenshot because it will not be possible uh, to note down every remedy. Okay. So, this is the th uh, list of thirteen remedies what Dr. Clark gives us. There is another list of thirteen uh, remedies what do what Dr. Tyler gives us. CPR sulfur lycopodium calcarea carb silesia natromure arsenic bryonia aconite belladonna rustox gelsinium and bactesia so if you combine this list there are some common remedies and there are some uncommon remedies so by combining these these two we get a list of 18 remedies so you can just have a look at these remedies okay So we have these eighteen remedies. So you can see, even in this COVID pandemic, what we had: arsenic, bryonia, sepia. See the foresight of these people. So 
so dr nash also agrees to the above by providing greater space for such remedies out of his 227 medicines uh, medicines and leaders of homeopathic therapeutics 74 uh, 74 have only running references and in the balance he devotes more attention to the above 18 so we have this uh, above list of 18 remedies so dr nash adds 10 remedies to that so these 10 uh, next please dr here so 18 plus 10 so we now have 28 remedies so these are the 10 remedies which dr nash wishes to add so next please so 18 plus 10 plus 6 so 10 were added by dr nash 6 are added by dr kent so now we have a very long list so we uh, so we have more slides i think we'll just i so i'll just allow you to take a screenshot of those slides these slides are numbered slide number 9 uh, next please dr riya so you can just have 10 uh, next please next please next please or uh, dr bhattacharya which slide do you want okay next please next please next please next please next please next please so what we can do is we can send the screenshots in mail to all the registrants later yeah yeah fine fine i'm uh, yeah, yeah absolutely fine that will be easier for them i guess yeah 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 because yeah. it will take a lot so, of time otherwise yeah 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 so we have a list of 140 uh, yeah uh, we have only 19 slides for this uh, only uh, till number 19 okay uh, so this list comes out to 144 remedies so these were the instructions so we have covered the significance of homeopathic materia medica the significance of homeopathy uh, homeopathic materia medica will be more highlighted when we study the drug and we'll see the corresponding rubrics we have seen the relationship of materia medica to organon and repertory the difficulties in study of homeopathic materia medica just as dr bhattacharya asked we'll take uh, towards the end of the session in the qna session uh, instructions from masters i have given you certain instructions because our masters have written so many things about uh, the study of materia medica it is not uh, possible to cover it cover it in in one session so uh, what what was uh, very striking uh, in my opinion i have covered that there are other few important things maybe in some other session or something like that and now we'll move towards a drug from various material medicals so doctor uh, can you just open that uh, the another ppt study of graphite is from various material yes yes so so graphite is a very well known drug to us we love reading graphite is we love comparing it with uh, it's similar uh, with some comparable remedies be it on be it in concern of skin symptoms or some mentals or something like that we look comparing it with petroleum we look comparing comparing it with alumina with pulsatilla calcarea we know some things about graphite is very well but we don't know uh, something uh, certain things about graphite is at all so that is why i chose graphite is so uh, next please so what dr philip billy says is very very important 
graphite is is not often thought as a constitutional remedy but there are people who resonate uh, resonate to this remedy throughout most of their lives and this should not be surprising since it is a remedy for chronic complaints so what the, this statement is so much in sync what uh, dr kent has said uh, it is a broad it is as broad and as deep as sulfur even dr borik and pathak sir has said said that it is a very deep acting antisuric remedy and that is why it is uh, and that is why it is such a good skin remedy so when a remedy is the similimum for a chronic state when a remedy is the similimum for a chronic state it generally covers the totality of the patient's characteristics and this is just as true of graphite is as it is of more familiar constitutional remedies so this is uh, so uh, so true what dr bailey has written so we'll move uh, we'll again come to what dr bailey has written we'll so when we study any remedy so even in herring's diagnostic method in the first reading we should uh, like uh, direct our attention towards the sphere of action so we'll just move towards the next slide uh, next please dr riya so we are moving towards the sphere of action given by dr cm bogar in his book synoptic key so uh, so i would like to tell that the most authoritative book for sphere of action is bogar synoptic key and uh, i i would like to mention one point just as potentization arouses dormant uh, medicinal properties potentization also develops certain very peculiar affinities towards certain organs towards certain tissues and not just certain sites and certain organs so you will be surprised a uh, strontium carb has a peculiar affinity towards femur there are certain drugs which have peculiar affinity towards the duodenum uh we ha uh, we have a uh, podophyllum we have uh, i am not able to recall one drug it's uh, feltori feltori has a specific uh, affinity towards the duodenum it uh, like regulates the duodenal secretion you have certain uh, drugs uh, in this uh, you will find the nuances in this uh, in this particular study itself so just as you can see study of graphite is from various material medicals region sphere of action and affinity by dr bogar it acts on the nutrition circulation skin folds behind ears this is very particular behind ears is graphitis and if you, if you come a little down if you come mastoid affinity that becomes capsicum so angles flexures orifices nails mind mucous membranes glands eyes so we have beautiful like for a uh, serous tissue we have bryonia for the fibrous tissue we have rustox we have uh, phytolacca we have rhododendron for the cellular tissue we have epis so we have so so beautiful like uh, for the uh, left uh, for the uh, carpal tunnel syndrome uh, for the carpal tunnel syndrome of left hand we have viola odorata for the right hand uh, we have goicum so so beautiful we have we have certain remedy for left left flexure of colon certain remedies for right flexion so potentization renders the uh, peculiarities of affinity so much that it is that it adds to the beauty of materia medica so uh, next please so what dr pathak says about graphite is it affects the nutrition in a peculiar way it is a remedy for those persons who have a tendency to put on unhealthy fat or those who began to emaciate and when uh, graphite is emaciates there is emaciation of the affected part which is also there in leadum which is also there in arsenic which is also also there in selenium uh, emaciation of affected parts so graphite is arsenic leadum and selenium these are the four important remedies 
and one of the several uh, common factors between graphitis and uh, graphitis and arsenic that is why these are natural complementaries what dr farrington sir tells us dr seema agrawal thank you thank you for your appreciation dr seema so we have seen the affinities so dr bogar has also graded those uh, that and we come to what dr patel says it affects the nutrition in a peculiar way it is a remedy for those persons who have a tendency to put on unhealthy fat or those who begin to emaciate circulation is affected causing irregular distribution of blood producing a rush of blood especially to the head flushings and pallor of the skin and mucus means and that is why we have graphitis is one of the most most important remedies for menopausal syndrome along with lachesis along with sabina and uh, creosote and all its chief action is on the skin especially at the flexures or folds of skin at the mucocutaneous junction just like nitric acid and behind ears which is very very peculiar to graphitis next please it produces thickening and induration of the skin glands tarsi nails and skin so in this respect it becomes comparable to calcarea glandular affinity and induration of that so it becomes uh, closer to calcarea group because it has also carbonate element in it in it so thick crusts are formed on the skin tendency to callosities it has a tendency to produce excoriation cracks or fissures at the mucocutaneous junction uh, tendency at the eyes particularly canthai nostrils mouth anus nipples fingertips folds of skin uh, next please so dr pulfer pulfer tells us in many respects graphitis resembles sepia in diseases of women but graphitis affects the ovaries more markedly than sepia graphitis affects the skin glands and orifices similar to sulfur but the orifices of graphitis are pale those of sulfur are red and in the last point we'll come to the last point Uh, and one point which is not mentioned in that ppt i have i mentioned that zincum has affinity for inner canthus and graphitis has affinity for out, outer canthus see the beauty of materia medica and uh, people say that uh, materia medica is which are dry, uh, which are not much rich in mental symptoms it is very dry and boring to read those materia medica. even they are so interesting see the beauty see the organ see the affinity see the selective affinity if you are confused between what is uh, for inner canthus and what is for outer canthus zincum has i in it so remember i for inner i for zincum so zincum for inner canthus and graphite is for outer canthus of the eye so can we move towards the next slide dr dia yes so the modalities worse by cold worst worse by drafts light light is very intolerable to graphitis during menses just like semisifuga it is one of the important uh, uh like uh, remedies which is aggravated during menses though it is comparable to sepia uh, but sepia has many complaints which are aggravated before menses suppression of uh, uh, suppression of eruptions just like uh, many important remedies empty swallowing fats so this is one of the with uh, uh, pulsatilla as we know it has elements from fried food and pastry products just like uh, elements from pastry products just like antim crude and kalimur so this is one of the numerous similarities between uh, graphitis and pulsatilla the elements and uh, aggravation from fats fats is intolerable uh, particularly pork uh, a pulsatilla cannot uh, tolerate pork and other fats same is applicable to graphitis aggravation from hot drinks warmth of bed aggravation from scratching night and wet feet wet feet this modality is again shared by uh, pulsatilla there can be suppression of menses from uh, getting feet wet this is common to both pulsatilla and graphitis 
So can we move towards the next slide? So photophobia is a very strong characteristic of graphitis as it is with the natrums in general. The leading remedy having photophobia is natrum self, but graphitis is comparable. So Dr. Vithilka sir tells us that. And we have some more modalities from Dr. Boger. Graphitis is ameliorated by walking in the open air. And uh, again, the beauty of Materia Medica, walking in the open air and tying the head is ethusa. <laughs> so uh, graphitis is better after eating and graphitis is better after touch. So we have certain remedies. Uh, please, the one slide before. So graphite, touch, we have apis, belladonna, china, hypersel, uh, lachesis, which are worst by touch. Which, uh, and we have a peculiar modality of china, a slightest touch aggravates, but hard pressure ameliorates. So this is the physiological phenomena, uh, allodynia. As we know the tracts of, uh, as we know the tracts of, uh, uh, pressure and uh, touch are different. Uh, yes, Dr. Kiran, we are coming towards the mental symptoms. We'll see the mental symptoms in detail. First, uh, Firstly, we'll see uh, just the symptoms and then we'll see uh, its detailed comparison with pulsatilla, uh, calcarea, natrum also. So uh, the mental symptoms is one of the highlights of, the, of today's drugs. So blandness, dullness and slowness. So blandness and dullness are near synonyms uh, where you can compare it uh, simply to say blandness and dullness of graphitis is, is very average intelligence, a difficulty to comprehend uh, difficult things. Graphitis is not a very intellectual remedy. So as of now, you just uh, remember it is not the subnormal intelligence, idiocy, imbecility of barita, bufo, thyroidinum, medorinum. It is the average intelligence. So we have very intellectual remedies like lycopodium, silesia. We have subnormal, we have remedies with subnormal intelligence uh, like bufo, barita, medorinum, thyroidinum. So in between these two extremes, we have graphitis. Absolutely average intelligence. Not subnormal, nor very intellectual. In dono ke beech mein jo aata hai na, that is graphitis. So I hope that is clear. So uh, timid. So graphite is a very shy remedy. Graphite is a very reserved. Uh, it is very irresolute, just like pulsatilla. One of the numerous compar uh, comparative and similarities between like, there's a lot of insecurity, anxiety about the consequences of the decision because uh, she cannot decide and the irresolution is out of the poor mental faculties. Trifles seem important. Small, small things seem important. And that is why uh, graphitis is one of the important fastidious remedies. Trifles seem important. She can become restless, anxiety, uh, if things are not in proper place. So she's very obstinate and censorious. Uh, next, please. Uh, discontented, always discontented. So discontentment is otherwise uh, a good session. Uh, thank you, Dr. Avdeh sir. Discontentment is also very prominently seen in antim crude and nitric acid. And in general, it is a tubercular trait. So when discontentment is very proper, uh, is very prominent, you think of graphitis, nitric acid, antim crude, and tubercular myosin in general. And when there is contentment, obviously opium, everyone knows that. Graphitis is also easily offended, just like Ignatia, just like Naxomica, just like Staphysagria, even harmless word offense. Irritability at trifles. We have changeable moods. Another comparison with pulsatilla, another common point with pulsatilla. There is great anxiety about future and the great anxiety about salvation. Moksh ke liye bahut. And when the person is tormented about salvation, we have lilium tea. The fear that something will happen, 
in kalkeria there is fear that she will go mad fear of insanity uh, fear that uh, she, fear of losing reason and people will observe her mental confusion that is in kalkeria but in uh, graphite is fear that something bad will happen so we have a rubric for this uh, so can we just make it a bit interactive can we have a rubric fear of something bad will happen so can we have some input we have a rubric for this so you may type i'll move towards the next slide you can keep thinking i'll move towards the next slide so anxiety and fear aggravation in the morning irritation excitement sleeplessness in the evening so in general many many symptoms are aggravated in the morning sensitive to music weeping from music especially organ i'll tell you what the organ musical instrument is it is not the mouth organ it is not the accordion i'll tell you what it is when we have sensitivity from music sadness from music aggravation from music obviously we should not forget aconite ambragesia ambragesia graphitis thuja and the natrum group and sabaina we should never forget these remedies so when there is sadness or aggravation from music particularly during menses there are only two remedies sabaina and natrum carb when there is aggravation from lively music when there is aggravation from happening and dhinchak music that is natrum self and coming to what the organ organ is not the mouth organ not the uh, nor the accordion organ is some old instrument which was played in churches earlier i don't think it is played these days so it is difficult to uh, elicit the peculiar sensitivity but in general in general uh, graphite is is aggravated by music weeping from music and weeping ameliorates so shankaran sir has highlighted this point weeping ameliorates in general weeping ameliorates all the complaints she is put into distress by very uh, minor things hence there is irritability anxiety restlessness from trifles trifles seem important but no matter what amount of distress she is put into it is ameliorated by weeping so there is depression there is aversion to mental work and difficulty in concentration so mental exertion uh mental exertion gives restlessness uh dr ganguly sir dr ganguly sir yeah i think you will be provided with the recording so weakness of short term memory but distinct memory of the past events so we will have a explanation of this absence of thoughts impressions do not penetrate so we'll have a detailed explanation of this further hard to get information from them confusion with weeping and awkwardness aggravation before and during menses so this this was in a nutshell the mental symptoms of graphite is now we'll see the mental symptoms of graphite is in detail so can we have the next slide please dr riya so this is what dr vitholka sir tells us the main idea which comes to mind in graphitis is blandness a dullness and heaviness on the three levels it is as if these patient are thick skin and callosed not only on the physical level the the, the skin is thick and callosed on the mental level and emotional level also the things do not penetrate and that is why we have difficult comprehension just as i said na ke uh, it is not very intellectual not very intelligent like silesia and lycopodium not subnormal intelligence like baraita bufo thyroidinum uh, thyroidinum and medorinum etc the, the one comes between in these two extremes is graphite is very average intelligence uh difficult things are difficult to understand normal things are comprehensible to a graphitis person so they seem to have a barrier which prevents stimuli from the outside world from reaching them outside impressions do not seem to penetrate resulting in a blandness of the entire system dr riya it's 5 o'clock uh, so can i take uh, yes, 10 more sir. minutes yes sir sure sure 
so the physicals are fine certain physicals certain generals are fine so can i move so can i continue with the mind yes sir that will be better yeah yeah in the physical appearance graphitis patients are generally overweight and flabby as we know they often have dark hair and the skin uh, skin color tends to be earthy the clinical appearance has many similarities to that seen in cushing's disease graphite is not as flabby as calcarea indeed they may be laborers by occupations the graphite skin is not as white as calcarea it has appearance of a greater white vitality as a general rule graphite pathology seems to affect most frequently laborers villagers and truck drivers so so this can be explained by two things just as i uh, uh, am repeating time and again that graphite has very average intelligence so a person who will do this sort of uh, a person uh, with average intelligence generally does this job unless and until his uh, financial uh, uh, like situation uh, compels him to do so in this respect also and the and these people on the account of their jobs are subjected to skin complaints of graphitis so it is in either ways graphitis is a remedy for laborers villagers and truck drivers uh yeah dr paul fear of terrible things going to happen we have a particular rubric for that we one so uh, very good attempt can you sum it in, uh, sum it up in one word so graphitis shows a lack of sensitivity to any stimuli body emotions and intellect any type of intellectual analytical or scientific work is difficult for a graphitis patient so this is what i was saying now very 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 uh, very average intelligence which i am uh, repeating time and again any type of intellectual analytical or scientific work is difficult for a graphite patient in the rubric uh, in uh, uh, so dr riya uh, so can you uh, can you just open the uh, uh, repertory yes sir in the mind just uh, open simple simple persons so in the synthesis repertory there's a, there's a rubric in the mind section simple simple persons yes sir. simple person there's there's only one remedy graphite is yes sir so so i'll just connect it with what i've been uh, saying again and again very average intelligence and i'll connect it with with the part 1 the repertory reveals what uh, the materia medica reveals what repertory fails to do if you just see the rubric simple persons you will never be able to understand completely what this rubric means it is only because we are studying uh, graphite is from various materia medicas that we are trying uh, we are able to understand that rubric such is the importance of materia medica so we have another uh, rubric unrefined we have only two remedies conium and graphitis and if you if you take basic persons you are ag again directed to simple persons only one remedy graphitis thank you thank you dr ganguly so any type of intellectual analytical or scientific work is difficult for graphite patients so this is the explanation of the rubric simple persons the mind is dull lethargic slow to receive impression information the blandness and the callosity dr harprav which repertory is best i'll come towards your question towards the end of the session uh the bland uh uh please note all the questions dr riya yes yes uh, thank you uh, the blandness of intellect comes because only some impressions actually manage to get through the patient's awareness only some impressions wo jitna simple hai utna hi pahunchta hai jitna complicated hai jitna high fundu hai utna nahi pahunchta hai <laughs> right only some impressions and this applies to emotions also and this applies at the physical and mental level also during the interview the situation becomes apparent in the behavior of the patient 
particularly there are some subtle questions in homeopathic case taking a typical graphitis patient will not be able to understand that if you just say him uh, if 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 we want to elicit the individuality if we say that if you ask a graphitis patient uh, can you just describe yourself or can you just describe what is very peculiar about yourself a graphitis person will not be able to answer that the nuances in a homeopathic case taking which are uh, to be understood by the patient a graphitis patient will not be able to understand that because utna intellect hai nahi utna khud ke bare mein bhi observe nahi karta so it is very difficult to take full case of a graphitis person to the interview it seems difficult to make contact in any real way with the patient it is as if there are calluses on the mind the calluses on the physical level also hence there is thickening of the skin tendency to callosity is we have seen it in the we have seen it in the in the physical complaints when we were seeing it is as if there are calluses on his mind preventing uh, anything from penetrating so high fundu high intellectual cheeze dimag ke andar ghusti nahi hai average intelligence just as i have been as one would expect from insensibility graphitis patient have a poor memory primarily there is a weakness of short term memory for the recent events as recorded in the books the events of everyday life do not make a full impression on the intellect so they are not clearly recalled this however does not affect memory for events in the distant past prior to the onset of graphitis mental pathology so so in allen skin in uh, other materia medicas we have been reading this symptom but unless and until we go to some other materia medicas we did not find a detailed explanation hence again this point is stressed that it is very essential to study a drug from various materia medicas so this we are studying from what dr vitulkas has written eventually the mind becomes empty this is not quite the classic emptiness of mind seen in phosphorus which is more an emptiness arising out of physical weakness in graphitis it is an emptiness of thinking itself hence we have ideas uh, deficiency of ideas you have this rubric in graphitis i'll just uh, like i'll tell you the most uh, precise rubric then i'll tell you in somewhere eventually the mind is empty they feel that nothing is happening inside sometimes this may be described as a sensation of fullness inside the head which blunts the thinking so as with most polarities in homeopathy either of these extreme can apply so i think the first point is clear why graphitis is there in the rubric why graphitis is the only remedy in the rubric and why graphitis uh, is the own is one of the only two remedies in unrefined so because of the dullness of mind there is irresolution graphite is patient cannot make even the simplest decisions they may go into a store and spend a lot of try, time trying to decide whether the price is good or not finally because they cannot make up their mind they leave the store empty handed uh, next please because of the dullness of mind there is also irresolution graphitis patients cannot make sorry 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 next please eventually graphitis patients become aware that their mind is not working properly this awareness then leads to various anxieties in particular they develop the fear that something bad is going to happen so i'm waiting for this rubric they are aware that they do not quite comprehend everything that is happening so they feel a calamity is going to strike this is not so much the fear of insanity that is so much characteristic in calcaria rather it is a fear of some misfortune is impinging upon them from outside world so this is also there in uh, some some bad thing is going to happen uh, so this is very prominent in phosphorus this is very prominent in surinam so this is not a fear of uh, Uh, insanity as it is there in calcaria but it is a fear of something bad is going to happen all of these mental and emotional symptoms are worse in the morning in the evening there can be relief of some symptoms but again the p- whole picture returns in the morning 
I'll just go speedily through. So we have seen what the ag aggravation with music is all about. Uh, this is not like natural mature patients whose sensitivity is more refined, romantic, and sentimental, and who indents their depressions by listening to music. In graphitis, it is an actual aggravation from music. Music makes them feel miserable, and they cry out of self-pity. But whatever reason, whatever thing makes a graphitis patient cry, she feels better after crying. So, uh, so it's already five fifteen, Doctor Ria. So, how much time is left? Yes, yeah, so we are running out of time. I'm just waiting for you to complete it. Yeah, I'll just just uh, I'll just take a few. I'll just take two more minutes. Okay, so that we can take a few, uh, take a few questions yeah, as yeah. well, no? So. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'll just take two more minutes. Okay. Okay. So pulsatilla can sometimes be confused with graphitis because of the irresolution can appear to be kind of changeability. Of course, pulsatilla is warm blooded and is aggravated in the evening after twilight. Many cases present a dilemma between graphitis, ferrum and pulsatilla. In these situations, the differentiating parameters are the effect of open air, how fast the patient wants to walk and the food desires and aversions. So both pulsatilla and ferrum are better by gentle motion. So we'll see the peculiar uh, cravings and aversions of graphitis. I'll tell you the peculiar cravings and graph uh, 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 cravings and aversions of ferrum. Uh, we know that calcarea has craving for eggs and aversion to meat. Ferrum is exactly the opposite of that. Ferrum has craving for meat and aversion to eggs. So can I get graphitis PPT? Yes, yes. Uh, I'll give you my email address. So right. So in situations, uh, there can be confusion between graphitis ferrum and pulsatilla. In these situations, the differentiating parameters are the effect of open air, how fast the patient wants to walk, and the food desires and aversions. So another remedy which comes close to uh, graphitis is calcarea. So it is chilly, obese, and easily exhausted from mental work. Graphite is a definite, a definite aversion to mental work and almost an anti-intellectual anti con uh, condition. Calcarea, on the other hand, may suffer from mental exertion, but will continue to preserve in an effort to complete the task. Also, graphite is more physically robust. So just as I said, no, graphite is more, uh, uh, more of a remedy for villagers, truck drivers, laborers. So I'll just, just one or two more slides. We'll take what Philip Bailey, sir, has to say. So Dr. Philip Bailey, sir, says that uh, one of the reasons that Uh, sorry. Which slide is it? S uh, slide number 26. I can't see the number. Right. Uh, one of the reasons that graphite ah, is, is easily missed. One of got the it. reasons that graphite is, is easily missed as a constitutional type is graphite is people have a few striking features. Just as a, they are quite unassuming, gentle and matter of fact, who would be described as normal and pleasant. Normal yet again, very average intelligence and pleasant people by most of who know them. Another reason that they are easily missed, that they resemble several other types, such as calcarea, pulsatilla, and natromule. Uh, next, please. Next, please. Next, please. So graphite is differs from calcarea in being more emotional and little more introspective and shy. Her shyness. The vast majority of graphitis people are female. And her softness resembles that of pulsatilla at the first glance. 
but she is generally a deeper more subtle person than pulsatilla once pulsatilla knows you she is generally extroverted and very playful graphite is on the other hand remains a relatively quiet person even in familiar company however graphite is does not have much of the soft maternal quality that is so typical of pulsatilla adult there is an attractive softness to most graphitis people that the homeopath can recognize straight such people are caring empathetic and will generally become distressed when confronted with someone else's suffering next please uh graphitis are gentle and sensitive and yet more grounded or down to earth than china phosphorus and pulsatilla they have less difficulty than the latter types in coping with the material world since they have a good degree of common sense and quite a keen intellect as a result of the warm heart allied to a sensible mind graphitis women are often to be found in caring professions i know a mother and daughter who are both graphitis constitutionally the mother is corpulent jolly and very uncomplicated she spends much of her time doing charitable work looking after the elderly and the infirm for for pleasure of it she does not take her work home with her and always puts her family first yet when she is at work she is 100% to her patients the same is said to be of calcarea so we just see a third type which is often corpulent next please a third type which is often corpulent cheerful and attracted to a charitable work is natromule natromule differs from graphite is and calcarea in being more intense emotionally with a tendency to identify too much with she is helping and inability to say no also natrum's cheeriness is a part of the mask we know natrum is like he doesn't want to hurt someone doesn't want to get hurt so so natrum's cheerfulness is a mask so this is not true with calcarean graphite is they are genuinely pleasing inside and outside so i'll so i think Just a we moment, should huh? conclude yeah 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 that's absolutely fine that's absolutely fine yeah we'll conclude i'll conclude from my side we can take some uh, some questions yes so all right thank you thank so much for the enlightening enlightening session and uh, please dear learners comment in the chat box with their questions so that we can take them up real quick thank you thank you dr seema ji excellent presentation and very informative session please make more videos like this thank you thank you so much Okay, so let's take the question that we got earlier, sir. Yes, uh, yes. A, a learner wanted to know how to transform patient's language into repertory language, especially the mental yes. symptoms. Especially the mental symptoms, right? What what generally happens? Uh, see, there are two uh, particular trends which are going on these days. So there are one one. Uh, so there are two schools. which are like uh, relying a lot of on the metaphorical meaning lot on the metaphorical meaning so if if uh, so i'll give you an example if a patient says that uh, sir ye bimari ko na pure jad se khatam kar do aur mere ko jaldi se jaldi theek kar do so a particular school takes the rubric that kill desire to and carry desire to be fast so this is not the literal meaning so one school uh, emphasizes more on the metaphorical meaning so metaphorical metaphor is in hindi mein kehte roopak so so kill desire to so we in other context we we will take it as a literal meaning unless and un, until someone says that i am so much angry of this person or i am i hate this person so much that i feel like killing him so unless and until one says like that we will not take the rubric in common parlance skill desire to but one certain school if you I, i have no problem in mentioning the names but i think i should not mention the names so they this school takes the metaphorical meaning of everything if dr saab ye bimari ko jad se khatam kar do aur mere ko jaldi se jaldi theek kar do so they'll take the rubric as skill desire to and carry desire to be fast 
so this is one example the other example is you just take the literal meaning of everything so we have so what is a rubric what is a rubric na rubric is the uh, what uh, a general state is or what uh, the description of a mental symptom is we have tried to sum up in one word so that is why you have that meanings and the first and the first uh, the most important thing is without uh, directly thinking of the remedy or without directly jumping onto the brick you just take the case you just note down the words verbatim patient jaise language mein bolna waise language mein the language in which patient speak you note down everything without any manipulation without your own interpretation while taking the case while taking the rubrics you can apply your own logic but when patient is speaking apply all that that is written in the organ on regarding the case you just take what is written in what in what language the patient says and you try to sum up what is the word for that and search that word in the repertory most of the times it appears to be the rubric when you are going for the literal meaning when it is a metaphorical meaning uh, two schools have different uh, uh, approaches and they have uh, uh, come up with an entire different approach but the simple meaning is what the patient says you without any interpretation without any alteration without jumping into any remedy without jumping onto any rubric just in an unbiased way just listen to what the patient says just observe it just note it down and try to convert that into a word and that and try to sum up that into a word and that those words are many a times rubrics in themselves so i think it, this is a very long chapter this is a, this can be a very long session in itself but i think i have uh, try to give a precise answer so is that okay dr riya yes sir yes sir also uh, a learner wanted to know yes uh, actually we all wanted to know what was the rubric that you were asking yeah the rubric is four buddings four buddings four buddings it right. needs to be compared with uh, the difference between clairvoyance and four buddings is that four buddings is uh, or, uh, always concerned about future pro, uh, future happenings and it may or may not happen but clairvoyance is extra sensory perception it can be about yes. past present or future uh, for uh, clairvoyance is always there clairvoyance is always there patient ko jo lagta hai wo hamesha hota hi hai be it deja vu be, be it jamais vu be it Simply, synonymously, extrasensory perception. But four buddings. It is just the subjective feeling that something bad is going to happen. It may or may not happen. Uh, yes. You can argue that 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 uh, as per law of attraction, he is uh, uh, attracting negative mm. entities. That is altogether a different. But the basic difference is, it may or may not happen. There is no certainty in four buddings. In clairvoyance, there is always always a certainty. Four buddings is always about future. Clairvoyance can be about future present or past yes sir uh, learner wanted to know which repertory software is best for freshers and new homeopaths according to you uh see uh, your individual uh, see uh, so any of the modern three repertories any of the modern three repertories uh, i suggest uh, first you get familiar with kent and then you uh, get familiar with synthesis complete and murphy so there are a uh, certain uh, what suits your need what suits your uh, i personally prefer synthesis so i personally prefer synthesis so synthesis is exclusively available in radar opus so, uh, so i personally prefer synthesis so you just be familiar with the way uh, rubrics are uh, the construction of rubrics in kent and then you will be able to understand what number of uh, rubrics and what number of remedies are added in these three modern remedies and what basic structure has been changed or it has not been changed in complete the uh, the structure has been retained as per kent in synthesis some rubrics have been changed 
you become first familiar with kent and then you can shift any of the three which you are working uh, in which you find comfortable and which you like personally from kent to you may move to synthesis complete or murphy most preferably synthesis and murphy i personally prefer i personally prefer synthesis thank you sir a learner wants to know can you suggest some books for group study and family study in materia medica group study and family study uh, at the ug level you have dr jd patel uh, dr and uh, dr jain dr anil jain yes sir and one more book i'm not able to recall i'll tell you the name i'll 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 uh, you uh, the learner who has asked this question i'll tell uh, i'll ping them uh, personally or i'll or I'll, in, or I'll inform you so i'm not able to J- uh, ratan jain i guess rat anil jain uh, ratan jain uh, doc, uh, dr jd patel and sholtan these four books for group study thank you sir uh, sir i guess we would also like to know very quickly about your upcoming book so okay okay that's fine that's great so can you just uh, play that ppt since yes sir since... yes sir so so i'm very glad to announce uh, i have recently published my book so i received my printed copies very recently and i'm thankful uh, to dr riya and to dr radha ropas for allowing me so it it is available as a printed book also and it is it is available as a ebook also the publisher for the ebook is potright publications from nagpur public publisher for the printed version is gurukul publishing uh hyderabad uh, next please so what will you find in the book so i have covered materia medica organon repertory r- rubrics clinical tips and a special chapter is there on dr hanuman because the book was supposed to be launched on 2nd july on the death anniversary of dr hanuman but I, for some reasons i couldn't launch on the death anniversaries but uh, but on the 2nd july i announced that this book is going to come and the chapter on dr hanuman that was ready the readers could avail to that chapter now the entire book is ready it is available as an e book also it is available as a printed book also so what you will find in the book so can we go to the previous slide yes sir uh no no not the next one the previous one so in the pre- so you will find uh the rare remedies as well as polycrest you will find unknown dimensions lesser explored uh, dimensions particular uh, uh, emphasis has been uh, laid on the clinical and the mind that's why i've named the book as widening horizons in the study of homeopathy and the subtitle is eye opening and thought provoking insights throughout the book time and again i have tried to live up to the subtitle in the organon section you will find tips on homeopathic posology tips on case management and a special section in the longest uh, chapter of the book in which i have given you a summary and a short summary of all the aphorisms and and footnotes in the repertory chapter there is a special section uh, and there are special sections on thera- therapeutic pocket book bbcr i have told you some new things about these repertories a special chapter about cross repertorization and rubrics with examples from movies and like uh, serials and other stuff and and there are clinical tips which i hope uh, which will be very useful in day to day practice and a very special uh, section is about dr hanuman his greatness uh, what doc what other stalwarts have written about him his contribution to medicine and and much more so so next please uh, next please so it is available on as a ebook it is available on amazon kindle and it is also available on uh, play store Uh, obviously the google play books it is also available on the website of spotride publications uh and the printed version is also available on amazon so you can see the pricings you can take a screenshot uh, next please next please uh, so these are my contact details so you can take a screenshot you can and you can contact me for any difficulties regarding this because uh, we were so, because it is a very vast topic so anything i'm just a phone call or a message away if you think uh, 
you need to discuss anything regarding this topic or in general so you can just and i have a youtube channel which i post similar sort of videos i have an instagram handle which i post uh, posts about homeopathy you can reach out to me regarding today's presentation regarding book regarding anything or regarding any matter about homeopathy you can reach out to me thank you so, so much sir thank you thank you so much thank you so much dr riya for conducting it so so let's uh, wind up here i would like to thank you yeah. for such an informative and enriching experience i would like to extend a very warm gratitude on behalf of radar opus team and on behalf of the bgen group i apologize to those if i couldn't take up their questions due to shortage of time and also to inform our learners we have an upcoming free webinar on delusions in homeopathic prescription by dr shreyan sparik scheduled for 31st of august 4 pm you will receive the link of registration in your mails and on your social media handles as well hope to see you all there i'm also providing the link in the chat in just a second and i would like to thank you sir would you like to say some words before parting thank you thank you thank you so much for the thank you so much for the platform thank you so much for the prestigious platform and uh, i'll just like to say one word that uh, not just because i am an author or not just because i am a homeopath uh, i would like to say that uh, have a rich library of books have have uh, read the printed books also read the ebooks also have and when you want to have a software so kindly have a licensed version of the software i know it is costly to invest in a software but ultimately it is the homeopathic fraternity who gets the money like instead of buying a very expensive smartphone uh, we uh, buying a very expensive smartphone we don't know even the full features like we just take selfies just whatsapp just social media handles receive the calls and just make calls so no need to spend so much so uh, extravagantly and exor exorbitantly on a smartphone which is only limited feature instead of that i advise to spend on a software whatsoever software which suits your needs which suits your personal requirements ultimately it is the homeopathic fraternity which gets the money and it is one time investment what you investment in the software numerous folds of that money you will earn in your practice obviously everything takes time but it is a one time professional investment it is not a physical ka kharcha it is a professional investment and one thing i realized after being an author uh, books have become costly or everyone has their personal experiences sometimes it becomes uh, 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 demanding to uh, spend on books so when you uh, think that you can't spend on books you can share a book you form a group of friends and you buy one book ek bar xerox kiya to chalega lekin pdf mat use karo because it does not justify the hard work and the investment that an author puts to write a book so i can understand if if if, if a book is very costly for example the catherine coulter's book is very costly it will cost you the materia medica viva set by dr vithal ka it, it is very costly so you form a group of friends who, who will sincerely make use of that book you make a contribute and you can share that book but don't use pdf and don't use xerox so circulate that book as an author and as a homeopath i feel uh, uh, softwares are essential so i feel that you purchase a licensed copy any software which suits your need i am not insisting on any particular software any software which suits your need compare every software this is all and just as what i said earlier move ahead no as long as we do not stop our study of homeopathy be it through webinars be it through books be it through uh, assisting our teachers assisting uh, uh, the experienced practitioners in our hometown uh, or in any sort of our journey in learning of homeopathy should continue it should not stop the pace does not matter the continuity matters this is what i want to say lot of things to say but this is all that can be said in a session already i have Thanks. taken a lot of time thank <laughs> you thank you so much dr riya once again for giving this opportunity thank and you. thank you for everyone for attending thank you thank, thank you, you all so the much. learners so the homeopathic fraternity who joined us here today and
of course dr satyajit thank you so much for such a great session thank you so much have a thank good you. evening thank you so much thank you so much dr dia thank you so much everyone